So the troposphere is the layer that we are mostly familiar with because this is the lowest layer of the atmosphere. This is the layer where we live. The troposphere extends to approximately 10 kilometers or six miles over our surface of the planet or over the level of the sea. However, in the reality, its altitude approximately eight kilometers or 11 miles over the equator and only eight kilometers or five miles over the poles because of this ellipsoidal shape of our planet and the atmosphere itself. The troposphere is defined by the behavior of the temperature in it. The temperature is declining with uh, the altitude as we move from the level of the sea or the surface of the planet, where the temperature is very comfortable for the biological life and for humans, of course, the temperature that we are experiencing right now, to negative 50 degrees centigrade, which is approximately 65 uh, de minus 65 degrees Fahrenheit in the tropopause. With increasing height, air temperature drops uniformly with altitude at the rate of roughly 6.5 degrees centigrade every 1,000 meters, so every kilometer. So this phenomenon is commonly known as environmental lapse. If you have previously hiked in the mountains, if you have experienced altitude, you certainly remember that the temperature is declining as we are moving up. If you are moving up in um, the plane, uh, the temperature is usually announced or is shown on the computer screen in front of you. And you can follow how the temperature is declining with the environmental lapse as the plane is going higher and higher. This um, graph from our textbook illustrates the environmental lapse. It shows how the temperature is declining as the altitude is increasing in the troposphere in the linear fashion. The next layer is the stratosphere. The stratosphere extends from the tropopause to approximately 48 kilometers or 30 miles. In the stratosphere, the temperature again increases and it reaches 10 degrees centigrade. The most interesting um, aspect of the stratosphere that it includes the ozone layer. The ozone layer is located in the lower part of the stratosphere and protects our planet from the harmful effects of ultraviolet radiation. The next layer of the atmosphere is called mesopause and it extends till 80 kilometers or 50 miles over the stratosphere and the temperature here declines again dropping all the way to frigid minus 84 centigrade or minus 120 Fahrenheit. The thermosphere is the highest and the thinnest layer of the atmosphere. It starts at the 80 kilometers over the mesosphere and it doesn't really have any definite top as it merges into exosphere which then blends into the outer space. The temperature in the thermosphere remains constant over the first uh, kilometers from 80 to 95 and then it increases again reaching all the way plus 50 uh, centigrade or plus 120 Fahrenheit. The first three layers, the troposphere, the stratosphere, and the mesosphere, are called altogether the homosphere. They are called the homosphere because they are relatively homogeneous. They have a uniform vertical distribution of gases. The outer zone of the atmosphere, the thermosphere and exosphere, are called heterosphere or heterogeneous zone. The heterosphere is the layer where the gases are layered according to their masses. They are not mixed, but they are rather forming very clearly defined layers. The layer of nitrogen, followed by the layer of oxygen, followed by the layer of helium, followed by the layer of hydrogen. The ozone layer is associated with the lower portion of the stratosphere at the altitudes between 15 and 55 kilometers above the surface of our planet. Ozone plays a very important role in protecting biological life on Earth because it absorbs harmful ultraviolet radiation from the sun as it passes through the atmosphere. Without our ozone layer, uh, life on the, on the Earth would not be possible. 
Through a very simple set of chemical reactions involving ozone and oxygen and also the anion O2 minus, um, ozone, ozone molecules are destroyed and recreated repeatedly. Unfortunately, due to anthropogenic emissions of CFCs and HFCs, um, the ozone layer have been damaged and there are ozone holes, as you have probably heard before, over polar region. The ozone layer is, uh, needs to be preserved and uh, the only way to do it is by cutting the emissions of CFCs and HFCs. We'll talk more about it in our chapter on climate change, but I just want to emphasize that the ozone layer in the stratosphere plays a vitally important role in um, protection of life on Earth. In this and in the following few chapters, we will frequently speak about the atmospheric pressure, which can be defined as the weight of the atmosphere on a surface. At the sea level, the average atmospheric pressure is approximately 1013.25 millibars. Pressure is measured by a device called barometer, or you have heard before about barometric pressure. And pressure is declining just as temperature very quickly in the troposphere. It continues declining. It makes sense as uh, we are moving up, the weight of the atmosphere is declining. And so the pressure is the highest in the troposphere. And of course, it's low or almost negligible in the mesosphere and thermosphere. So the uneven distribution of the temperature on the surface of our planet in the atmosphere leads then also to the uneven distribution of pressure. You know that the warm air is moving up and the cold air is sinking. And so that creates a variety of different convection cells and um, uh, various processes in the lower part of the atmosphere, leading to formation of various weather systems. Weather systems are short-run atmospheric conditions that exist for a given time in a specific area. The climate, on the other hand, refers to an average weather conditions over a long period of time, usually with an average of at least 30 years. So climate is just like personality and um, weather is just like our mood. So climate is what we expect, it's predictable, weather is what we get. So I'm going to play with you a weather or climate game. Um, I will read a statement and you need to think and decide if it describes weather or climate. It rained two inches last night. Is it weather or climate? In Michigan, in the last 100 years, there hasn't been a 100 Fahrenheit day in April. Is it weather or climate? Over the course of the day, the barometric, barometric pressure dropped. Is it weather or climate? Michigan summers are always warmer than Michigan winters. Weather? Or climate. For the winter of 2010-2011, Muskegon received 103.1 inches of snow. Weather or climate? Michigan summers are hot and humid. Weather or climate? On average, there is less than three inches of rainfall in April in Michigan. Weather? or climate. And it has only rained two hours. Weather or climate? Weather. Right? So you can see the difference. You can think about, again, as personality, climate is as personality and um, weather is as mood. Weather is changing very quickly. Climate is something that is stable. It describes certain climatic conditions of the area over a long period of time. So in this and then the following few chapters, we will familiarize with the major elements of weather and climate. These elements are temperature, precipitation, 
humidity, pressure, wind direction and speed, and cloud cover. Air temperature is one of the most important characteristics of our climate. So what are those different geographic factors that uh, control air temperature? First of all, it's the latitude. We know that the temperatures are usually the highest close to the equator and the lowest over the poles. Or there are some other factors that are making this pattern slightly different. But in, on average, the temperatures are declining from the equator to the pole. The distribution of land and water is another very important factor if you compare the temperature at the same latitude, but in the area close to the ocean and um, inside of the continent, you probably would see a very different picture if you compare, let's say, uh, the temperatures on the coast of Florida and in Arizona, they would be quite different during different seasons because of the proximity of the ocean. The general circulation in the atmosphere is that pattern of pressure that is created by the pattern of temperature that is leading to the movement of air and creates different gradients and move weather systems all around our planet is referred to general circulation in the atmosphere and it has very significant impact on the distribution of the temperature. The general circulation in the ocean, the ocean currents, also play a very significant role in the distribution of the temperature in the air. Uh, the ocean currents, such as, for example, Gulf Stream, are moving huge amount of energy in the form of heat in the ocean water, and they are transforming it from equatorial regions to the polar regions. You know, for example, that um, climate of Western Europe and Northwestern Europe is much milder than climate of uh, eastern Canada on the same altitude. This is because of the warm ocean current called Gulf, called Gulf Stream. Another factor that is um, affecting the distribution of air temperature is, of course, elevation. We saw already how the temperature is changing in the troposphere and also in other spheres. So elevation, because of the landforms, is also affecting our weather and climate dramatically. If you are standing on a high elevation on the same latitude uh, within the same area as um, the area at the level of the sea, the temperature at the high elevation will be significantly lower, even the latitude is exactly the same. The topographic barriers, mountains, play also a very significant role in the distribution of our temperature. We might have a temperature difference of several degrees on the eastern and western side of um, the mountains, or so on the northern slopes versus the southern slopes. And finally, the storms, those moving, very quickly moving weather systems uh, that are known as cyclones, are also very quickly changing the distribution of the temperature as well. So in the following next few chapters, we will continue conversation about the weather and then we will speak about climate.